Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you how you can structure your .NET solution into multiple projects that make sense and keep your application layered and well structured. In this specific demonstration, I'm going to be using Jason Taylor's clean architecture solution, but this is not just the only way you can do it. It's just my personal favorite way and I've actually been using it for the past three years with great results. That's why I want to share it with you in case you are not aware of it. There is also Steve Smith's clean architecture project, but I personally align more with Jason Taylor's one. That's why I'm going to be examining that in this video. However, there is no right and wrong as long as you can keep your code clean and well structured. I've worked with projects that the whole solution was one project, but developers were so in line and they were so good at knowing what to use where that the project never implemented any code smells or crossed any boundaries. However, physical splitting will help with that. That being said, I've also seen excessively split solutions in multiple projects, which really should have been folders, which is also very problematic. So in this video, I'm going to show you what I think is the golden line between one project and over splitting. So what I have here, and this is very important, actually, before I show you the projects themselves, is we have two top level solution folders. These are very important. They give structure to our application and they split the test project from the actual source code. I always have them and I definitely recommend you to have them. Now the Docker Compose, ignore it, it's just there because Rider uh, identified that this solution has some Docker files in it. That's fine, ignore it for now. What we care about is the source and the tests. First, I'm going to go to the source. And as you can see, we have four projects and these four projects represent three different layers. Those four projects are in order of from inside to the outside, domain, application, infrastructure, and web UI. The web UI is also called the presentation project or the presentation layer, and it's supposed to be the way you interface your application. So in this scenario, web UI is an Angular application, but it could very much be a traditional MVC, it could be a Blazor app, it could be a desktop application, it could be anything but it's supposed to be the top layer that your customers are going to interact with your project. Now, why is the project split like this? And what are those projects supposed to represent? I'm gonna pull up an image here. And this is what I want you to think about when we're going through these projects. In the very core of your application, you have the domain layer. And this domain layer, which is represented by the domain project in our solution, is supposed to store any enterprise-wide concerns, things like types, entities, exceptions, things that are used across the whole domain, not specific to the application that we're working on, but domain-specific. So if you're working in finance or your finance-specific things would go here, things like currency, effects rates, the way you represent them, they all go in there. You use value objects uh, to combat primitive obsession as well in those uh, scenarios. So it's a very domain-driven approach if you think about it, but it doesn't have any logic for your application per se uh, in that layer. It's more about the objects themselves and the entities themselves, the exceptions and the way you want to represent that in your code. So any domain logic goes there. Then you have the application layer, which in our solution is the application project. And the application layer has concerns specific to what it's supposed to be doing. For example, if it's a service that is supposed to return you the FX rate, uh, then all that logic on how to do it lives in the application, but the types themselves live in the domain. So the application is the layer where you want to define the abstractions. For example, the IFX service should go there, but not the implementation. Keep that in mind. It's important. It's only dependent on the domain layer. So it will use the FX rate domain object from the domain layer, but in the application layer, you will only have things on, okay, how can I do what my application is supposed to do? In this layer, you have, but when I say this, I mean application, you have to define your abstractions and you can use those abstractions with dependency injection in your code. However, the how you can do that, for example, how you can go to the file system and grab something, how you can go to your identity provider and grab something, how you can go to your a persistence layer like your database or how you can call an external service like an FX rate service 
that would go, the implementation of that would go in the infrastructure layer. And let's see that in this project. So I'm going to expand the domain and I'm going to show you the entities folder. This is a to-do list uh, and to-do item uh, project. So here we have two domain entities, which are the to-do item representing a to-do item. And then you have the to-do list, which is representing a to-do list. Go figure. And those are just domain level entities and things like domain level exceptions as well. For example, an unsupported code exception, which is enterprise wide would also go in here. But as you can see, there is not much in here other than a few objects and then a few very core like domain event, uh, abstract classes and the value object definition. And this is the idea of the domain object. It's supposed to represent the core of your application and address any enterprise-wide concerns. I cannot stress that enough. You don't want to have application-specific implementations here. This project also doesn't have any external dependencies. And when I say external dependencies, I mean from the other projects. You want this to be the core of your application, so it's isolated. Then you have the application layer or the application project, and that project does depend to that domain layer only. This project will implement how it can use those enterprise-wide concerns into a meaningful way. For example, we have a command which is called create to do item. By the way, this project is using Mediator and CQRS. We've talked about this in this channel. If you want to check that out after this video, ideally, uh, click on the top right corner of your screen and you can go there. So here we have a command which is an I request from Mediator, and then how we can use that command to create a to-do list item is here, but we do not have the implementation of this I application DB context here. The interface, the abstraction lives in the application layer. In fact, I can show you that this is in the clean architecture dot application layer, but nowhere to be found in this project do we define how it can do it? And the reason for that is because implementations for those external concerns should go in the infrastructure layer. And why do we do that? Well, the infrastructure layer directly depends on the application layer to implement those abstractions. And we do that because if, for example, in the future, I wanna change from an entity framework and I wanna use Cosmos DB, for example, or if in the future I want to change my uh, identity provider and instead of using the um, ASP.NET Core identity, I want to use identity server or I want to use Okta, the application itself, the interface, the abstraction will not change. My application will still need to do those things defined in my contract that is the interface. However, the implementation, because it can be fluid based on swapping out the tools that we're using can be externalized into another project and we only have to deal with that external project when we need to make changes leaving our application layer unaffected and this abstraction in my opinion is the most important in this grand scheme of things because it gives you the peace of mind that if you clearly define what your application needs to do it doesn't matter what the implementations will be you can change them later and as long as the core idea is unit tested and tested in general, uh, it doesn't change and it doesn't break based on the tools behind the scenes. So again, any application specific concerns and any application logic specific concerns go in the application layer, but any implementation for those concerns go in the infrastructure layer. And then you have the presentation layer and the presentation layer depends on two projects. It depends on the application layer and it depends on the infrastructure but, and this is very important, the only reason why it depends on the infrastructure layer is to do service registration on the startup.cs. For no other reason and in no other place should you refer to clean architecture dot infrastructure or in general the infrastructure project in any of the other uh, places of your presentation layer. And this is very important. This is a constraint you have to put on yourself. Uh, because it could actually cause issues of you crossing boundaries. What I like to do personally in that uh, scenario is I use a very similar approach where uh, Jason is allowing you to use 
public uh, static service registration extension methods to automatically do your registration without actually knowing how to do it. So all your startup.cs needs to do is like dot add infrastructure and then we register all that. I personally like to mark things in the infrastructure layer as internal when they don't need to be used by anything external and then I only register them in this method. So even if you try from a web UI or a presentation layer to do something that crosses the boundary, you cannot because the internal keyword won't allow you to do it. But that's just how I like to do things. So again, to take a look back at our image here, the domain layer is the heart of your application addressing enterprise level concerns. The application level is addressing application specific logic and concerns, but it doesn't implement any of that logic when it comes down to the services that you're using to implement it. Of course, what your application should do will go there. So application-specific concerns and application-specific logic will go there, but external matters like database, file system, network, calls to external services, they would all go to be implemented into the infrastructure layer, even though they are defined on a contract level with an interface on the application layer. And then presentation, is only depending on the application and we had to also depend on the infrastructure but only for service registration remember that and by doing that we're achieving a very safe and clean structure when it comes down to addressing concerns and responsibilities in separate layers and then what you have is the projects solution folder which i also use a lot which is the idea of having one project per type of tests per project let me rephrase that the application project for example has unit tests and integration tests so what i would do and what jason does here as well is i would create a test project per type of tests per project so application dot integration tests all my integration tests for the application project goes there then application dot unit tests all my unit tests for the application project goes there. If I had more, like if I wanted to do some Gherkin acceptance testing and BDD, application.acceptance tests would be there to have all the acceptance tests for my application. So that's another very nice way, which I think people overlook and sometimes they smoosh integration and unit tests into one project and they just call it tests. I don't like doing that. What I'm personally doing, by the way, when it comes down to naming is I say application.tests.integration and application.tests.unit, but that's just semantics. It doesn't really affect how you structure the project. Another thing about this project splitting is that I would usually, if the web UI or actually the presentation layer is an API, I would have a separate project for my uh, contracts, requests and responses. And in my CI, I would also publish that as a NuGet package. So it can be reused by other teams in the company or it can be reused by other projects. And if this is a gRPC, which has a client or an API that has a client or an SDK effectively to call it, I would also have that SDK here with a .SDK or .client and those projects would depend on the contracts which I had split in a separate project. That's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making this videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.